We've got some great minds here this morning, including the, the O'Reilly. So let's bring him on to the screen now. This is absolutely wonderful. Loving this. Let me just get that out of the way there. Good morning to you. Let me just put you on a better part of the screen as well. The O'Reilly's live with us from south of the river in Good morning, guys. How are you? <laughs> Lovely to have you here. We've got uh, uh, Nora and Willie along with Bobby this morning. How's it going? How's he treating you? Very good. As great here. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great review. Isn't it? That's TripAdvisor, five star there. Fantastic. <laughs> Brilliant. So what have you been up to? And are you enjoying your, your, your time here in Portugal? Yes. yes. We've been enjoying it. We've been getting the boat, playing golf. Oh, lovely. Okay. Yeah. And on the Arawera, on the Arawera, uh, eight, well, they've got 36 holes altogether, haven't they, in Arawera? I don't know if you know it, Raquel, but uh, the Herdad do Arawera, south of the river there. Um, so you had a good game uh, yesterday, I believe, Willie. Is that right? Well, I, I finished the 18 holes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good game. <laughs> Brilliant, brilliant. And and I think Bobby's got you to, to thank, hasn't he? And we were talking about business today um, and what it takes to be successful in business. You must be very proud of what he's achieved uh, oh, yeah. around the very, world and specifically. Proud, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I think he gets a lot of it from you, right? Because he told me a story about uh, how he used to join you uh, early in the morning um, in your bakery. Um, he'd be up at four in the morning. Uh, to go and work with you in the bakery six days a six days a week, Nora. Um, yeah. So he, he he had it right from the get go, right? This entrepreneurial, hardworking spirit. He, he didn't have a choice, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is that the way to do it with kids? Yeah. Right. Yeah. right, but but I mean, what what did he have those sort of inklings early on, as well as not having a choice? Um, probably be just to get away from us and to do something <laughs> himself. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. So tell us, is this the business you started in the in the 80s then? Yes, tell, tell us about that, if you 1986. will. 1986. Yeah. 1986, did you say? Okay. And what sort of business was it? It's a home bakery and coffee shop. Home bakery and coffee shop. Fantastic. Oh. And so up early in the morning, Bobby, um, making, the, making the baked goods to be selling in the shop. Um, what are your memories of that? Um... Oh God, there's always <laughs> once. <laughs> yeah, we used to get up very early, four o'clock, like what you were saying, and we'd go in and, and three of us actually would go in at, at that hour in the morning in the early days when it started. Wow. Uh, go in, turn on the ovens, get everything going, start doing donuts, breads, the whole lot, get everything ready for the day. And then nine o'clock would come or ten to nine, and I'd have to go off to school and then come back after school and at four o'clock and and um, basically just help out for the next two hours and do it every day so saturdays i work all day and As luckily a... luckily for kids there are laws against that now <laughs> <laughs> uh. but that's that is that's incredible isn't it that's an incredible start in life um which i think has made you a very hard working person we've got uh, bernardine uh, mckenna is oh, joining oh. us this morning look at that hi yeah. from all the family in ireland and we're oh, very God. proud of him that's of you bobby uh, Lorna is tuned in as well. Hi, Fam Bam, looking great. Um, <laughs> and the smell of fresh baked produce, Ooh. divine, says George Jensen. So that was one of the perks of the job, wasn't it, Bobby? Uh, but or was, are you, was that wasted on you at like half past four in the morning? No, no, actually, favourite was one of the hot donuts, you know, coming out with some nice fresh cream. They went, to, yeah. they went to school smelling of donuts, all yeah. of our kids. <laughs> But they were, so. they were walking <laughs> adverts for the business, weren't they? Yeah. <laughs> Superb. <laughs> Mehmet's very <laughs> glad of <laughs> your advice. Today. Sorry, brother, go on, Bobby. My brother runs that business now. So he took it over many, well, how long has he got? Now? 2011. 2011. So my parents more or less retired, more or less, still had them out. Um, but um, yeah, so he, he runs the same business now in our hometown. Amazing. What's his name? Darren. Darren. Shout out to Darren this morning, running the business over there. I can smell donuts for some reason now in my in my mind's nose. Um, and, I'm, and that's what exactly what I'm going to do after the show. Go get some of those lovely um, Bolos de Berlin, the closest thing you get here, I think, in Portugal. Um, so we're talking generally then about what it takes to succeed in business. And then we'll get into the specifics of starting a business in Portugal, because I know Bobby's got one or two things to say about that as well. But um, going back to you, Nora and Willie, what do you think it takes to be a successful business? This person should we start with you nora well plenty of hard work um six days a week 
for at least 30 years we've done it. And uh, we worked together, I think. That was a lot of it. Right. Willie done the baking and I done the selling. Okay, so a bit of like mum and pop teamwork there. Yes, teamwork, basically, yes. And the kids, all of them helped. Except right. one. In oh. her area, she wouldn't come. She was too nice. <laughs> and how do, how do you deal with that when, 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 when one of the team members isn't performing like we, that? We sent her to the far side of the world. She's in Australia <laughs> today. And That's England. what happens, kids. <laughs> Tough love. <laughs> I know, I seriously. I don't want to work today. Right, that's it. You're off to Australia. Right, at, that, 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 at that stage, we had plenty of help and we had good. Like Lauren and Bobby got it and Keith. The three bigger ones had to do a lot more than the three younger ones. Oh, wow. Yeah, look at oh, that. Basically, and a, boy. And, a, and a good extended family as well. These are all the customers and as well, aren't they? That's my sister coming in because she done it as well. <laughs> oh, bless you, Bernadine. Thank you for being here this morning. Appreciate it. Well, cheers, Nora, for that insight. Let's go to Willie now. What do you think it takes, Willie? Hard work, honesty, yeah. and uh, be professional about your job. Yeah. I work seven days a week. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I was in the big bakeries for years. I started in the bakery in 1961. Wow. Um, I retired as I say, 11 years ago. That's a lot of years in the bakery. <laughs> <laughs> it sure is. It sure is. You can retire then. You said... I, mean, I do all the Christmas stuff still. Do you? So you like, like once, once a baker, always a baker, and you help out Darren in, yeah. in, the, in the shop there in the bakery. Yeah, of course, yeah. 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 You mentioned honesty there. Um, some might say that's a quality that's not so uh, apparent in, in the world. <laughs> in business or in the world at the moment. What do you mean specifically by that? That's, that's most of your politicians, I think. <laughs> You're not. Yeah, don't get Bobby started on that. Uh, <laughs> what, 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 what do you mean about honesty in business, especially? For these youngsters who are starting, you know, with the startup. People. Sorry, I interrupted you. Go on. You have to be honest in your dealings with other people. Yeah. And treat them fair. Treat staff fair. Um, just be a, a good employer. Um, Love it. Love it. Absolutely. And, and, and some people in, in the modern workplace might see those sorts of things as a bit of a weakness. But as somebody who's been um, in, in business for a long time, that, that wins out over time, doesn't it? I think people do yes. make compromises early on and cut corners. But it's that sort of thing, that sort of attention to detail and to treating people properly that's going to see you through over the long term, I'm guessing. Yeah, well, we've done deliveries and dealt with the other shops and businesses. We'd be supplying other places. And uh, you have to be right with other people. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, we have and good staff and good family. I think that was a lot of it as well. We yeah. had a very good family and good staff with us. Yes. Well, we've got Ava Baxter as well here now, even the third generation now too. So, yeah, I mean, you've really started something over there, haven't you? She's a granddaughter. Uh, that's a granddaughter that's coming in now. She works there as well now, as does her brother. On the weekend. As does her mother. <laughs> it, the... it, Raquel, this is sounding like a Portuguese business now, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. I was like, oh, totally on board. <laughs> yeah. That, that's a thing. For sure. Is. Yeah, that that because um, we talked about this before, didn't we? That when a Portuguese um, a person is thinking about business, and certainly traditionally, and it's something we could learn about now. And I think the O'Reillys have got this uh, in, in 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 great scale as well. It's about the long term, and it's about something that serves the community and the family, rather than just making a killing, building something and selling it off. That's a very modern way of looking at, at business, and, and a very sort of might I say American kind of startup culture. Mm -hmm. um, tends to think like that. But I could see you smiling when, when we were talking about three generations. I was delighted. Delighted. Congrats, guys. Thank you. It's really. The, perhaps the Celtic <laughs> business spirit there. So is that a way to think about it? And can we still do that these days here in Portugal? Is that a good ethic to, to bring to the table uh, or the boardroom, I should say, or the, or, or the, or the uh, kitchen uh, in the bakery example? Um, is, is that still an ethic that's worth um, preserving here when you're thinking about starting a business in Portugal? For sure, Carl. Uh, not, uh, 
I think business, a lot of times, is the translation of what you are as a person. So the principles and the, the, the things that guide you in your personal life should also translate into your business. And this is a testament to it. I mean, the, the longevity of the, of the business, and you can see, uh, you can see just by the, to, to hear them speak, it's the principles, it's the honor, it's the do right by people, do right by, uh, by the world philosophy that gets them, it's a foundation. And the larger the foundation, uh, the, the more the sustainability it has. So, of course, it is uh, a, a, a complete requirement if you want to have longevity. Of course, then there are other factors. But if you do right by people and if you do right by yourself, of course, uh, it, it's 80% of the job done. And hard work in the mix, good principles in the mix, and, and there you have it because... It's like that old saying, you fool some people all the time. And it's exactly that. If you have nice, solid grounds and nice, solid principles, it may take some time, but uh, it will come across the world and society and everybody that you are an honest person. You can, they can do business with you. You are solid. You are trustworthy. So completely uh, on board. And, and that's something that I do carry to to my own businesses and my work ethics i think it's fundamental fundamental so nora and willie might get employed for a bit of business consultancy and <laughs> a few seminars before they return to ireland at the moment i now, love this, i love that <laughs> this, is all, this is all very well we're talking about the qualities of, of of being a successful business person and raquel you've uh, explained a few of the processes here but Bobby, once or twice, uh, you've come up against some circumstances that have been a little bit challenging. And I'm, imagine when you ring home and uh, Nora says, how's it going, son? You say, it's OK. And she knows there's something in your voice which is saying, all is not well. <laughs> Mums know, don't they? Uh, what are some of the challenges or your observations of running a business in, in Portugal, Bobby, that have done your head in, basically? Uh, none, really. It's been very simple from day one. <laughs> Well, it's the president watching. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> no, to be honest, I think Raquel hit the nail on the head earlier on, like when she was saying about there are some interests that sort of fundamentally will annoy you. But in a lot of ways, the Portuguese have got it right. Uh, right now, to set up a company part is quite... Uh, well, what I found more difficult was sort of getting even the likes of Vodafone turned on when they're going to come and connect the phone line, things like this, and... You know, just there were just sort of extra little services that you needed when you had your office, and then oh god, I didn't know I had to sign up for this and sign up for that. So a lot of it was the not knowing part. Yep. But if someone had come to me like Raquel and sort of gave me step one, step two, step three in um, in the early days, it would have made life an awful lot easier for me. Um, where basically I was like a blind man in the dark <laughs> trying to find my way through it. Eventually, I stumbled my way through it and, and came out the other side, sort of known how to do it then but known what not to do the next time if you know what i mean so right now setting up a company for me would be uh, a walk in the park it's quite straightforward mm -hmm. but um, because i've been there done it and sort of went through the the hard parts as in raquel was talking around about picking a name i don't pick i don't choose a name anymore. i just pick whatever one comes out and then use a trading name on top of that yeah. because your company will have a name but it's not really what you're going to trade under you know okay. So um, the computer generated names is sort of a, they are funny and you're trying to pick one that doesn't look like a, a brothel um, or a strip club or whatever, like <laughs> flamingos and so on. That's the trick part there, yeah, because you still have to invoice in, in the name. <laughs> yeah. So your name sometimes can, if it, if it doesn't mean anything, it's better than actually meaning something bad, you know, so. <laughs> and that's when sometimes your clients have got some explaining to do. When um, their, their, their accounts <laughs> department says, what's this? Why have you been spending money with the Electric Flamingo Club? <laughs> right, okay. Um, Lorna, Lorna's back in the chat here. Not just as kids involved, the aunties, the uncles, the cousins, and even granny threw a hand in one way or another over the years, be it washing up or painting the shop. Family always there. Cheers, Lorna. Thank you for being here. Um, Alan, H.L. Hunt, a self-made billionaire, was asked how he became so successful. He replied, it's all luck. The harder I worked, the luckier I got. And I think successful yeah. people would agree with that, wouldn't they? Um, We're not and... <laughs> Sorry, say that again, Nora. We're not millionaires, so. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> well, thank you for being here. A, a millionaire's in the sense of the experience and uh, wisdom that you're giving us this morning. So thank you for allowing us to um, to, uh, to talk to you about that. Uh, may one open a business in Portugal and stay, or do you still have to set up from home country? That's an interesting one, isn't it? I mean, you, you did it boots on the ground, didn't you, Bobby? You, you came here and started a business. Yeah, but like now I'm setting up uh, people's companies, well, helping them set up for a different reason, um, yeah. from a residency point of view, but we're setting up companies where they're, they're non-resident, but the company becomes a resident. So the person himself does not have to be a resident in Portugal, have to have a Portuguese address for their company. Yeah. Um, but don't need to be here. Okay, and it is, a, it is, I think what Suze is getting at here is if you set up a business, can you stay? Um, I suppose that is one approach, isn't it? A, a, like a visa approach to start yes. a business and invest in a country. Yeah, D2, a D2 basically is an entrepreneurial visa. So if somebody comes here and sets up a company um, and it's an actual real company that does actual real activity, they can have um, a D2 visa. They can apply for a D2 visa. And actually it's quite fast. It takes between three to four months to, to gain the actual uh, residency cards. All right, there you go, Sue. There's, there's an option for you. Now, I'm sure the O'Reillys would rather be playing golf or eating um, a Portuguese pastry somewhere else. I won't keep you much longer, but I just want to do find out um, what um, Bobby's got planned for you. What, what is it you love about being here? And what have you got planned today, uh, Nora and Willie? Well, I just like being here. I like the country, but it also gives us a chance to catch up with Bobby, Dive and the boys. Yeah. And enjoy your company, enjoy your time here. You know, now he does come home, but it's nice to come over too and catch up with your family. And, oh, lovely. You know, and we get spoiled. That's another thing. <laughs> That's a great thing. How is it? How exactly is he doing that at the moment? Because I know one of the deals for when you visit Bobby, you've got to bring me Irish sausages and the taste <laughs> of it, right? So that's bread, bread that's bread. Super. <laughs> bread as well. <laughs> okay. And how exactly? How exactly has he been spoiling you? Oh, bringing us here and really looking after us and. We really do have a good time. Fantastic. Some of that O'Reilly hospitality there. Uh, Willie, what would you say? What do you like about being in Portugal? Uh, <clears throat> we've been coming to Portugal for 27 years. <laughs> okay, so you know it then. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the friendly people are like ourselves, the Irish. Friendly. Yeah. yeah. Of smiling. Uh, just great. Yeah. yeah. That's why we've been here that long. 20, so 27 years coming to Portugal then. Did yeah. you, have you Had you spent more time in the Algarve before? Is, would I be yes. right? Yes. Okay. A good bit down there, yeah. yeah. So what do you think then of this place just south of Lisbon in this area, um, you know, Almada, and where, where Haddad de Mayo is being built? What, 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 how would you compare that and the Algarve? Why are you laughing, Bobby? They haven't been there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. have you keep, sorry, have I just ruined a secret? <laughs> I'm building 80 homes, and here they are. <laughs> yeah, they, don't want, they don't want to go to work. So, like, um, ah, fair enough. I mean, I'll bring them probably over there and show them. But, um, no, they haven't been. I don't think you have any. Yeah. Yeah. The sites. Oh, the sites. Yeah. Yeah, the the sites. You, you are so modest. I will be taking my parents straight there from the airport. <laughs> Look what I've done here. But that's that's amazing. And 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 yeah, Lisbon, Algarve. Can you for for people who are considering coming to live in um, Portugal who don't have that same experience as you, uh, Willie and Nora? Um, how do you? What, what's the comparison like between the south and the south of the country and just south of the capital there? Here or there. Well, Portugal is well, uh, I... in the south is a holiday resort down there on yeah. every bit of it. Mm. Here in Lisbon it's more of a just a holiday and a business place. Mm, it's relaxing. It's all go up in the Algarve. There's so many at all the nightlife and everything like that. But oh. where we were in, Bobby had a spoiled. We were in a lovely area. And uh, we didn't have all that noise and all that type of thing when you go on holidays and overcrowded pools. We weren't in a place like that when Bobby brought us. We were when we were able to go ourselves because we couldn't afford anything else. Amazing, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> and, and I love that. So it being that in that little niche just south of the river there in the capital, it's more relaxing than being in the Algarve, but of course you can jump oh. on a train or, or, or drive into town and you've got all the excitement of the capital. Right? If you want. Yeah, but where we are, it's absolutely fabulous. You have oh. everything. 
Have the peace and quiet yeah. you can well, reach. We're brought everywhere. Yeah, we don't have to go anywhere. Yeah. It's the same when we go to Australia with the daughter. She won't let us come on the trains or the buses. <laughs> she yeah. wants to bring us. Incredible, incredible. So, all right, we'll have a great day today. It's been so lovely to meet you. Uh, I think we need it. We've got Thanks. another shout out for the business back in Ireland here. You can't beat the brown breakfast and the friendly stuff. So, if, if somebody wants to go and have a visit, I would love this. If people are touring Ireland, which they do, uh, from, from, you know, like people, Americans, they've come to Portugal. Oh, yeah. yeah. And they think, right, I'm going to go and visit Ireland. I've heard so much about it. I've got a connection there. I would love it if somebody goes in and says, I've heard about you on the Good Morning Portugal show. So where, which town are we talking about where you can get the legendary brown bread? In, in Mount Melly, County Leash. County Leash. We're, okay. we're in the centre of Ireland. Yeah. The heart. The heart, the heart okay. of Ireland. Go and get yourself a brown breakfast. Uh, Bernadine okay. saying, yeah, loving family there. And you'll experience that loving family atmosphere and the legendary brown breakfast. Thank brown you so breakfast. much. Thank you. Thank you. Go on, go on, Nora. Years, I have had people come back into the shop that had visited me when we, us, when we started. And only recently, now you're going to laugh at this, right? Uh, someone came in and they wanted to know where was the little old lady that served behind the counter. <laughs> I wasn't there. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> so, so the you know who you are. <laughs> I don't know whether don't that's... Don't do that. <laughs> uh, amazing. Well, it's been so lovely to meet you. Have a have a yeah. wonderful time. Thank you for sharing Thank your you. wisdom with us. Very Thank you for being time. here. Thank you for being on the show. Bobby, you. You, the O'Reilly legends right there. Have a great day, folks. And we'll take and we're gonna hang out a bit more with Raquel and do a bit more step-by-step -step startup. But you go about your day and, and then have a good one there south of the water in Lisbon. Take care, O'Reilly's bye Thank for now. You. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. How about that? A legendary wow. a fantastic. Oh my god, that just makes me smile. <laughs> Love that. Seriously, go get a brown's breakfast.